How does a nation select priority areas? Okay? And the algorithm is pretty, pretty simple. It's very straightforward. It looks like that. You start from the full landscape. So you have that region, that landscape you're planning, and you have a grid cell uh, superimposed to it, okay? And you start with it. Then you calculate or determine the cell that has the least marginal value and remove it. And the marginal value is the relative contribution of that cell to the whole system, okay? So for example, if, if there is a species that occur in just one cell, that particular cell has the highest contribution to the system. It means no other cell is just is as important as this one for that species because the species is endemic to that place. You understand? So the marginal value of that cell is pretty high, it's very high, it's the highest for these species. But then you can have a species that occur in, from 100 cells, it occurs in 90 cells. So the relative contribution of one of these 90 cells to the other 100 is pretty much low. Not contribute a lot, the species occurs in other 89 cells. You get it? So that would be the marginal value or the relative importance of the cell for the species. And then you remove it from the landscape. So that cell isn't that important for this particular species. You remove it from the landscape. And then you have to recalculate everything. Because now this, that place does not exist even more. So you recalculate this and you determine from the remaining cells which one has the least marginal value and you remove it again and you go iteratively doing that until no cells remain in the landscape, okay? So when you remove the last cell, that cell by definition will be the most important one. Do you agree with that? If that cell was removed last, it means that over all runs and all possible options I had, that cell was so important that I never have removed it. So when I remove the last cell, this is the most important. And you have a kind of uh, a ranking. So the last cell removed is the most important, <laughs> and the first cell removed is the least important. Okay? <clears throat> so let's see it happens. Suppose you have data for one species. I'm keeping it to one species because it's easier to understand. Okay? You have data for one species in this uh, geographical space. And the data you're using, for example, is species abundance. So you have four individuals here, and 51 here, and 30, 23 here. Okay? It could be species richness. For example, this site has 51 species. This site, this site has just one. It could be habitat suitability probability of concurrency, pretty much anything, okay? Functional diversity, you can put anything right here. So, the thing is, you will calculate the marginal value of the cell. So if you sum up all these values, you have, believe me, 200 individuals, okay? So the relative importance of that cell would be four over 200. It contributes with 2% of the total number of individuals in the system. Do you understand that? So it can replace this. This cell contributes with 2%, 5%, and 26%. Okay? This is the relative importance of that cell to the whole system of cells. Okay? This is the marginal value. So the algorithm goes like, what cell here has the lowest value of importance? It contributes uh, less to the system. That will be this one, right? So it will remove the cell. Not here anymore. Then when I remove the cell, I have to recalculate everything because now the total is not 200 individuals, but 
196 because I removed the cell with four individuals. Okay? Is that okay? So now I have, for example, for this cell, the relative contribution will be 10 over 196. And these cells contribute with 5% of the total. And I keep doing that. So I will remove the cell with the, the lowest value. That will be this one, right? Remove the cell. I recalculate it again because the sum now is 191. And I keep doing that. Next cell, the next cell. And you see the values change because they're gaining importance because there are so few cells that cells are getting more important. And then when I came to this situation, the last cell I will remove obviously has the highest value of importance. It is the only cell I can protect. So it is obviously the most important. Okay? Then you have this, and after this, you can say, what is the most important cell? Or how can I define priority? So once I have run this algorithm, I simply will do a rank from the last cell I've removed is the most important one, and the first is the least important one. And then I have a rank of priority for my cells. OK? So this cell is, most imp is most, the most important one because it contributes the most to the whole system. OK? This is uh, pretty simple to understand, pretty easy, and especially if you're thinking about just one species. Of course, you will have many, many species occurring in the same cell, and zonation so we need to decide what to do. And there is some rules to remove the cell, okay? I'll get to it in a minute. So after this, you get some kind of rank like this. You say, these were the last cells to be removed, they're the most important ones just as we did. And this was, these were the first cells to be removed. They're the least important ones. And then you have a, hang, a rank of priority and you can establish what are your conservation priorities. Okay? Cool with that? Does anybody don't get what the algorithm is actually doing? Okay. Um, so, you have to have a rule to define what is <coughs> that marginal uh, value. So the definition of the marginal loss represents the conservation value of the cell. And it implements your conception of conservation value. So if you think that rare species should be more important or should be considered more important than other species, then you need to have a rule for selecting what is the marginal value of that cell based on species rarity, okay? If otherwise you think that the most important criteria would be to have cells with a lot of species, then you have to have a rule that says to you that it's most important to have as many species as I can in each cell than selecting the value of the cell based on just one species, right? <clears throat> Zonation allows you to do this by four different ways. I'm not going to all of them. I will stick with the two first ones. That will be the core area zonation and the additive benefit function. It is a way to calculate marginal loss, a way to define what is the actual value of species contribution to the whole system. Okay? So, you remember for, sorry. Uh, the, this core area zonation means that the cell value is the maximum biological value within the cell. So, in my example, I have just I had one just one species, okay, but I can have ten, and each species uh, will give you a different conservation value, because one species can occur in the whole system, so the contribution of that cell will be pretty small, and the species can occur in just two cells, and then the contribution of that cell will be pretty much higher. So what variable are you using? For this species or to the other species? So this core irresonation uses the maximum biological value. It means that it uses the value for the species that is most affected by the removal of that cell. 
So in, again, in that case, if I have a species occurring in 10 cells and another species occurring in two, the marginal value of these species will be different for a given cell, okay? And the value I'm gonna use to say what is the actual marginal, uh, marginal value for that cell will be the highest value. It means the value that the species that is most affected by the removal of that cell gives me. Okay? <clears throat> On the contrary, additive benefit function will sum all of biological values within the cell. So if I had two species, I have the marginal value for one and, to the, and for the other. Additive benefit function will sum those values and give me a combined value of biological importance. Okay? And of course, while you're doing so, you're favoring rare species or species with smaller, distribu smaller distributions, right? And here, you're favoring sites with more species, more species-rich sites, because you're summing the values. And the more species you have, the higher the chance to have a great value. Right? <clears throat> so just before lunch, in the first part, I told you that there was this problem, the maximum representation problem, that we can solve. That is, you, you want to represent the maximum of biodiversity as possible under a predefined budget you have. So Nation solves a general case of this uh, problem that we call utility maximization problem. It's the very same thing. You want to maximize the utility or the benefit, you want to maximize the benefit of the sites you are selecting to be protected, given that the costs of those sites does not exceed a predefined budget. The only difference here is that in the first problem, we have a kind of a target. We're defining a given level of representation to the species within this set of cells. What zonation does, it, it has a function, this, this Fj, that transforms, converts representation of species, of any species in the sites, into a conservation value. So I'm not concerned about targets, because I'm transforming the targets into a general conservation value given by the, the marginal loss of that cell. Okay, so how can I use this, what function is this? How can I transform the representation in some kind of conservation value? That function is the removal rule you have. So if you're using core area zonation, this is how zonation will transform representation in a value. And it will give more value to species with low, uh, with small distributions, right? If you're using additive benefit function, it will convert rep representation levels into a summed value of conservation importance for each cell you're using, right? That's just what is, is it doing? So just let's take a look at how it would work. Suppose now we have two species. These are the relative contributions of the species to the whole system, okay? Just like we, we've done before. This is species one, and this is species two. If we're using core area zonation, <clears throat> zonation will use the highest value. It means the cell is most important for species one or two. In that case, it is much more important for species one. So that's the value he's gonna use to calculate marginal loss, okay? In this case, the cell is, most imp is more important for species two then that's the value he's going to use here, right? Problems with that? So, in additive benefit function, what you get is a sum of these values. So level of representation is not 0.6 or 0.5, it is 0.65. I'm summing the value, so not 0.3, but 0.4, because I'm summing the importance, I'm, uh, adding up the importance of that cell for each species, okay? 
Well, that's the only difference. Then the algorithm proceeds the same. It picks the cell with, uh, picks up the cell with the least value that with this one, and remove it. Then it recalculates the importance again, and remove the next one, be this one. Recalculate again, and remove the other one. Right? So what we get when you're using Cori resonation is the maximum value is one, which means that that cell counts 100%. It's the most important cell. And when you're using additive benefit function, what you get here is the number of species you're, you're trying to protect. Because there was, this will be the, the summation of all the values of importance for each species that will sum one. Okay? This is why this is one and this is two. In that particular case, we have the, the very same solution. This is the most important cell, then this one, then this one, then this one. But that, this not necessarily is the case. You can have different solutions if you're using uh, core air resonation or additive benefit function. What you have to know, I'll get back to this, is that core air resonation somewhat emphasizes rarity. It's looking for species with more distributions and giving more importance to them. And additive benefit function somewhat emphasizes richness. It's looking for a site with more species because you're summing all the values for all the species. Okay? We should take a break at one. Okay. Let me see one thing. So I'll get there. Just explain that and then we have uh, lunch for the break. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so <clears throat> the rule is defined how can I translate this representation value, this representation level into some kind of conservation value. But then the way I calculate is, is just like this. I said to you, core area will use the highest value, but there's a formula for that. And it's pretty simple. You have like here, the proportion of the remaining distribution of the species, that will be Q for this, the proportion of the remaining distribution of species J inside I, okay, relative to the whole system. What is the contribution of that cell to the whole system? This should be this. You can have a weight for a species J here. It will change the importance of the cell. So, <clears throat> if the relative contribution of that cell for that given species is low, but the weight of this species is high, then the marginal loss of that cell could be high. Okay? So you're saying, okay, this cell will not be of much importance if this species is, was, were not that important to conservation. And all this is constrained or divided by a cost of site. And that goes the same way. If you have a place that is very important for a species, but the cost is too high, then the marginal value is low. I mean, it is good for biodiversity, but it's not good for taking actions, right? So all this will be balanced by the cost of the site. And this is for core air resonation. The additive benefit function works pretty much like the same. But then you have this value for one species, and then you have the same, the other value for other species calculated by the same way, and you just add uh, values, right? Pretty much the same thing. You have some uh, clear rules. It means that if you have a species with a small distribution and a species with a large one, and you were to remove a cell, you will prefer to remove a cell from the range of these species and not from this one. Right? If you have species with the same range size, it would be better to remove a cell from a species with the lowest weight. If the species is more important, you will not remove the cell from that range. If you have species that have been uh, losing range, you prefer to remove a cell from a species that has uh, lost a smaller proportion of its original range than from this one. And you also prefer to remove marginal values and not cells 
located in the core of the species distribution because that will be bad for what we know about range dynamics and metapopulation dynamics. Okay? This is how core area works. And then we have some examples. Should, should I continue, Tao, or should we take a break?